Good evening, everybody. This is Leah Ryan and Loft Manager Richard from the Pioneer Racing Pigeon Club of Ontario here with your Monday night family show live where we take all your pigeon comments, questions, and do our best to answer them. If we can't answer them, our friends in the audience will take it away, Ryan. Yeah, feel the heat. Some like it hot, some like it hot. And that's what today was here at the village. Uh, super high heat, killer humidity. Nice sun, some good wind, and for our first training today, road training, I think very, very well. Um, again, very extreme conditions for training flight number one. And I did say I don't use, uh, don't use word candy or word salad. I say it as it's going to be. The group got a little tighter today. We're down some pigeons few pigeons we got you, a little what bit. are you down uh, about seven got yeah. a little tighter you know what that's not bad a little, at all a little tighter i know some fellas they they took out 60 birds uh on a first toss and and dropped half of them well they make they, sure they got, make sure we're all using too. outdoor voices because you guys are outside yeah. and we're not yeah. whispering we're talking we're right. talking yes that's right but so, so you know to to drop seven and the day's not over and then there's tomorrow yeah and the nice thing was they did have a loft fly in the morning so you took some of that energy out mm -hmm. of them and um and then they were released were released in the heat of the day so uh they could fool around a bit but they were getting so we got to get home yeah and again as we say they are basket trained for about, oh, I'd say two to three hours. And uh, the group gets tighter as we go. You'll see the stragglers fall off real quick, this method. Um, and it's not for everyone, but this is how we do it. Because uh, I'm sure some of you people will have questions. And if you do, that's fine. Basket training has, uh, they've had quite a bit of basket training prior to this as well. Oh, yeah, they've been in the basket. Right numerous times they've been in it enough and you know what they're all uh, fairly old mature birds and uh, don't be uh, shocked if one of your birds comes late here today uh there was about three or four that didn't go on the toss they didn't come in they were a little stubborn but uh even the ones that come in late here they learn they learn the ones that stay out <laughs> over tonight they learn anything that comes home tomorrow morning will not go on the toss tomorrow but everything else goes just so wanted to let everybody know. Uh, I've just uh, checked the benzene clocking site. We have 180 pigeons that have arrived from today's first five kilometer trainer. Out of, I believe we shipped around what, 186 ish, yeah. 185 ish by the time those, uh, the few of those got held back. Yep. So I would say for the first toss of the season. I don't think that's bad. I mean, it certainly wasn't a smash. I thought it was a good trainer, first trainer. Uh, the, like Ryan said, the weather conditions were very hot by Canadian standards. Very hot, very humid, very muggy. That's no excuse whatsoever, but it could have added to why perhaps we might be down the six pigeons. I don't know, but I thought they did great, and I'm really proud of them. They had a west wind which uh, pushed them to the east a bit. But I noticed after five or 10 minutes even, they were coming back over right. where I was. They're playing. Right, they're, they're playing around. So And, and, and the ones that are out, uh, the ones that come back from this, they're gonna learn, they learn something. Yeah. They don't wanna make a mistake again. If they stay, stay out at night, it's a good thing they learn yeah as long as an owl doesn't get them you know what i mean well, and you know if them. if i could just interject you know what's a nice thing to see a nice thing to see is some of the ones that struggled at the beginning with some health issues like princess i believe is one of them i think feather locklear perhaps yep. was another one I, I can't remember all the names that struggled there at the beginning a little bit with a little bit of respiratory Look at who, who was who clocked today, those same birds. So, you know, that gives me hope, and that tells me that we are doing something right, that you guys are doing something right, Ryan. You're doing something mm. right. 
Uh, as far as treating them, watching to see what's wrong with them, trying to address the issues, trying to get them back into health. I mean, Princess literally at the beginning was all we thought she was a goner. We really did. And look, you know, at, you know, where did she come today? You know, she came, she came, uh, believe it or not, she came with her group. She came in her group, which was nice to see. I, I noticed, uh, I, I told people, watch this morning's law fly when the birds land this morning. They landed. Not one bird was puffing. Not one bird in the law fly. Right. It flew 35 minutes. Right. And it was Not one. one. Very one. I said today, I guarantee you, you take these birds in the basket today, uh-huh. every one will land with the wings open, just bath right out. Because they change the flying stroke, they change. Everything's more hyped up. Everything's, this is, <laughs> and you see it changes in the bird. Remarkably, Princess landed with her group. She was one of the only birds I noticed wasn't puffing hard. Like, you know, just something I had noticed. Yeah. And you look at the birds as a whole. You see some of them, some of them are going up on the twisted sister, crawling the wire. They're lost in the brain. The brain from the heat is scrambled. They thought sure. they had to go in right? there. And, and by the way, this is why we train them. 300-mile pigeons were made today rather than taking them out at 6 o'clock this morning. If I had taken those same pigeons out at 6 o'clock in the morning, you lose way more than the 6 or 7. You could lose your whole group because when it's cool, they go up and they start to party. Right? This way, they're working in that heat. <laughs> they got to think what they're doing. And uh, you see how they come. I-, I think they came good. I think they build confidence. And you know what? They learn to work in the heat. Just like we started training when we first started law flying them, we started letting them out at noon, get them up in the heat, get them up in the heat, get them up in the heat. Now they're back into the heat again. Good. I'm just going to get to the comments here over on Facebook and YouTube. Want to give Michael Peebler a shout out over on YouTube. On Facebook, we have Robert Daughtry. Tracy is in the house. She says, good evening, Pioneer Village people. Jim is in the house. Haven't seen you on in a while. Thanks for joining us, Jim. Heather Green says, good evening. Tracy says, thank you, LMR, for your hard work today. Absolutely. Thank you to LMR and to Ryan and, of course, to the Pigeons for the hard work they did today on our first inaugural trainer. A few glitches with the technology. Not to worry. It happens. And we're just trying to learn to live with it and go with it. (laughs) As much as it kills me inside, Uh. we're trying. Uh, Henry says, good evening, all. Hello, Henry. And Troy Spencer says, hello. Rita says, that's a total success, our trainer today. I'm pretty proud of it. I know well, deep down inside, Ryan, even though you are a perfectionist when it comes to pigeons, you're proud of it, too. I think they did great. Guido is in the house. Robert says the 112 degrees where he is. Wow. I mean, it was all it was close to that today with the humidity here. It had to be yeah. in about a, like 100 or 95-ish with humidity. It's hot. It's, uh, it's hot there, Robert. Uh, Nice, nice thing about it today, it, they had the white, nice, puffy clouds, which was good. A good pigeon sky today. And, yeah, good pigeon sky. Um, you know, thank, thank goodness it wasn't a headwind, the, the same west wind, to be a headwind. That would have been a little different story. Yep. Um, I, I liked how the, the birds majority stayed in groups uh even uh, we had very few stragglers they all stayed in their groups but again today we put this one in the books we were good today tomorrow we could get wiped right out you know I, i'd <laughs> like to say one thing five kilometers was well, absolutely nothing no it's a joke it's a joke right yeah. but and we're treating it like yeah it was a, well, a exactly great like literally we're talking about this five kilometer trainer it, it, like yeah. it was the olympics yeah it was not the olympics. it was just a yeah, trainer it's like it was three just a little... miles Baby, nothing and trainer. I, 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 I yep. wasn't here, yep. but yep. I yep. didn't ask you. Did they come in dribs and drabs, or they came no, in they, they, they came good. Uh, they're they're getting used to. Uh, well, they'll have no water on their board tomorrow when they go out, so they'll learn here again. The water's inside. That's okay. That's a quick a day or two glitch that we'll we'll clean up with. But once they figured it out, they enjoyed it. They went inside. You'll see tomorrow they'll storm for the water. But it's funny how pigeons remember things and and and. They knew they do know they have water inside, but they're so uh, they, they have a comfort zone there. Well, and now we're going to readjust that now a bit. What I say is, it's a habit. Yeah, it's a, it's okay, a comfort a zone. And, and we seen today with the trapping. If I'm going to bring this up to you, 
you let the birds up at 6.30 this morning or whatever time they went up for their law fly. Mm -hmm. And even though you, you backed them off, back the feed off the night before, but for the last couple weeks, you've been getting them in around one o'clock for their meal. And today you asked them to come in around 10.30 or so. And they, uh, that, was, that was changing the, uh, the, system. The, the system, right? And you could see that. Yep. You took the water away from the board. Yep. That changed the system. And changing the system is very delicate. Yeah, it is. Right? But you, you know, know what? We, we saw that even when we started to, to let the mountain law fly, part of the breaking. It cha you know, it's change. You always have to adjust to change. So there's always going to be that little, that leeway, those few days where... You know they got to figure it out, and, and, yeah, so. and that's what today was, and, and that's why we're at two miles. And we stay at two miles. We'll be there or two uh, five kilometers. Give them credit. It's three three point something miles. <laughs> three point something miles. Yeah, and, and uh, <laughs> that's that. That's it. That's a simple wrap, really. We 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 managed to get by today. We dropped a couple. As I say, the group gets tighter. So what was the speeds coming in uh, uh, time wise? Twenty minutes, twenty two yeah, minutes. I don't even uh, know what team won today, Leah. You know, it, have to honestly, it up. feels like a blur because there was so much going on today with the whole like ear camera not working and this and that. I don't even know. I think Mike Vandriak. There were some people online today that were recording kind of the times when they were let out. Maybe they have the dark. I, I mean, I guess I should track that tomorrow but uh, there's just too much going on today maybe mike can provide some insight on how long so so all, all, all i'm saying is if it took them 20 minutes to come okay they were sure doing a lot of fooling around because of the first time out and because of the heat it actually was good for them because they started get what well, they did this fooling around business and they started then at one point to get a little bit of heat, a little bit of I'm getting hot. And they decided well, they're gonna go. We gotta we gotta find that place here and get but, back in here. But I will say, uh, this year compared to last year, I've played with the birds more on the board. Not really played, but I've been on them with the cameras more. Mm -hmm. Very good at coming to the board. Very, very good. Very calm around me, even though they're panting. Uh, I mean, if I had holes there like they did in San Diego, I could have literally just took a broom and just pushed them right in. <laughs> so that was good. So they're they're in the they're in the t uh, teenage stage. Yeah, most of them. Um, we we I always like to have a, a couple old birds in with the young birds. And today, what we did was in each liberation one two three four the colors whatever they were we had year one yearling hen in each liberation and i had some and, cocks and i had a couple, had a couple i had a couple pioneer cocks, okay. cocks yeah. i don't know when they came but were, ryan took a note for example a yearling hen that flew uh two thousand kilometers last year in training plus nine races the first liberation i would say the hen took four minutes to come from liberation back here. Meanwhile, the group, these teenagers, took 22 minutes. So it's just to tell you how these birds are still teenagers. They're going, oh, man, let's go and experiment. Let's go look over here. Go look over so, there. Go look over here. But the yearling hen right. went, Choo. If I If I can yeah. just interject here, maybe for the new people... Yeah. Why yeah. is it that you put the yearlings, one or two yearlings, in with each group? I think it's a good thing. Uh, I'd like to put more in. We're going we're gonna to do more well, because I, I believe that uh, it, it helps. It'll help the young birds. Uh, they're almost like experienced birds, and they, and they want they, to keep those young birds to bring them home. You know, once these young birds start figuring out, hey, look at these guys, we're going to go. Yeah, so it's they, just they a sort little of act of, like uh, a, apprenticeship. Yeah, they act like a leader, sort of like, like hey, follow me. I know where I'm yeah. going. They know the drill. I'm going to get back to the comments here. Lori Crozier says, thank you for a great training toss. I love the split screen. You guys are fantastic. Thank you very much, Lori, for your support. 
Ken says, took my whites for a 20K training toss today. And Ken Lavoy, by the way, he is the breeder of Princess. So a big round of applause to uh, you, yep. Ken, and to Princess, who, have, you know, she's really gone the distance there. So well done. She, yeah, she's done very well. I remember when she came in, she wouldn't eat the grain. And that, was her, that was her problem. Yeah, that was her she, only problem. She got, weak. <laughs> she got weak because she wasn't eating right. And then all of a sudden, she turned it around. Yeah. Uh, let, let's see what happens. Yeah, she picked it back up. We concentrated her in the section, or in a, the show cage there. Yeah. And she, you know, she learned to eat just enough. And then, you know what, going out. And then, and then finally she let it go. So now <laughs> she's onto the grain. And you know what? She did good today. So that's good. If uh, the audience okay. has any questions about today's trainer or about how we train or about anything pigeon related, you guys know what to do. Put your comments or questions below. I will ask the guys for you. Question for the audience. When you guys train your youngsters, do you put some yearlings in with the pack? Other than, of course, Dave Ottaway, who I know he does train young and old together because of the course that they fly. They fly combined, but... For those of you that fly young birds and old birds separately, do you put yearlings or old birds in with your youngsters to help guide the way and train them? Interested to know. Uh, Ken says, hope Zeus is okay. Hmm. Ryan, you think just uh, maybe about a week, right? And he should be fine? Yeah, he'll, he'll be all right. <laughs> he'll, uh, yeah, he'll, about a, yeah, he, he won't take too long. He's going to get moving on it and uh, at least it's not that bad. Sore. It was the foot, his foot, right? He broke his foot. Mm -hmm. I believe his foot. He shaved his foot and, and shaved a bit of skin on the keel, but not not like just uh, peeled the feathers off, not the skin. Gave himself a, a clean little, shave. Little burn, burn. <laughs> a little burn, a little wire burn. Oh, he was lucky, yeah. <laughs> lucky. And you knock know, on I, wood, uh, I, knock on wood, we, ahead, that's Ryan. the first bird. That's the first bird this year that did that. So Troy, Troy oh, Spencer like our first, says, like considering the birds. Sorry, Ryan. Uh, Troy Spencer says, I have never added any old birds with his young birds. Uh, he thinks they need to learn the way on their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, hey, you know what? You, you could say that, but, you know, you could argue this fact. Let's put, let's put some 13-year-olds uh, mm -hmm. in a classroom, right. real nice classroom with nice new books. Right. Let's have no teacher there. Do the kids learn anything? No, they don't. Now, we're not saying you have to. Certain guys do it. And you, I know uh, Paul McElhone there, he swears by it. He says, he says at first that the old birds really leave them. And then as the youngsters That's catch right. on, I mean, today you've seen it in the, on the Red Wings team. Richard had a beautiful white hand. She did it in four minutes. And I, I says to my dad here, how, you know, how was it? He said, listen, she just went out. She was out. She was out three feet ahead of them when the gate dropped. She just kept going, and that was it. And a few more times, and they'll all start to catch up and get into the the, the rhythm. Yeah, you don't, once you don't, you start you don't, getting out there a little bit. Hold on, and you and you don't have to do it. Last year we didn't do it with these birds. This year we're trying it. I got some pioneer birds here. Uh, they went today <laughs> with them. Go, go have some fun. Frank Icorn says I no, find never. Even, even if Never have I. They should figure it out on their own. Uh, they're a homing pigeon. And, you know, I get that. And, hey, I am no pigeon flyer by any stretch of the imagination. But in using my human common sense, we've got four little kittens that were just uh, born maybe two or three weeks ago. Uh, what, did, what dad did you say that they were doing today? Where were they, well, where were they going they, to the back? They come out, they watch their... Right in the litter box, and they're only three weeks old. They're watching right. their mother. Right. That, and this and, is what I'm saying. Yeah. They, they're three weeks old. They're figuring out the litter box. Why? Because they're, they see their mother and their aunt, who is the, the other cat that uh, dad has. They, you know, is it not much easier? I, I get they're homing, and they get the magnetic pull, and they should figure <laughs> it out on their own. But why not we make it a little easier for them? And, like, you know put somebody with them that knows the way and just for the first little bit just help them along well, I, I like to say I, I like yeah I think it helps them out if you let some old birds out with your young birds in the beginning 
It helps keep them I, around. I, I don't think. I, Although I, I had uh, hawk had losses. Listen, I, I look at my. Uh, I don't. I, I don't think it's really that big of a deal. You're going to see them about three or four times. The old are going to stay with the young, or the young are going to stay with the old. It's, it's, it's not a big deal. I, I don't think it's a big deal. I think I, either I, either way you want to bake the cake, I don't think you're going to have a losing I, season either. I'm not going to argue or. with you, but I think it can't hurt them. It doesn't hurt right. them. There's right. no way it hurts them. I mean, maybe the, way, the only way it would way, hurt them is a winner is, is a winner it, is, is a winner, it, right? Maybe if the, the yearling had, has sure. a bad habit, maybe that. I won't. Anyway. Mike Vandiax is very smart to train old birds with young birds. It builds good habits. Yeah, with maybe. Young birds. Hey, hey, you want to know what the... You know what the Can you guys not hear me? I don't know. I'm not sure if you can hear me or not. I think their audio's shot. Yeah. You there, Leah? I'm here. Hello? 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 Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, there, you're back you're, now. You're back now. Sorry about that. Uh, one, one sec. Technical fun on a Monday family show. Uh, Ken says that he always uses a mix. Lori says Dave flies only young birds, but everyone flies differently. No, absolutely. I just wondered, you know, what the masses do. I know we've heard from a few of the European breeders that we do auctions for that they do integrate the older birds with the younger birds for their training program. To me, it seems like a smart idea, but I don't know. The guys are just waiting to hook up again. If anybody knows of a good internet provider, let me know. Okay. Can we hear now? Come no, on. we can't hear. Oh, we can hear you. I'm just letting you We're know. We're here. We can, we can we hear can you. Hear We're you. back. We can okay, we can hear, hear you. you. Well. Welcome back. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. know. We can hear you. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Go you ahead, can Ryan. Hear us, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Well, at least you can hear us. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, I think either way, the older young, I think try it out. Try it out for a year or two and see how it works. What's it going to hurt? You think it's going to screw you up? I don't think it will. <laughs> I think it helps just a wee bit. So let's any kind of we're, we're little see. bit of help. We'll see. Okay. Um, I wanted to bring something up mm -hmm. that I get people call me and say, you know, my bird's sick. I got to bring it over to you. And a lot of times they're asking this question when it's too late. And. Okay, when I go into a pigeon loft, my loft, and I go in to feed them, uh, or when I walk in and they don't look at me and they don't come to me, and I go to feed them, and one bird doesn't come off the perch, or he sits off in the corner, I know right away there's got to be something wrong. Right. Right. So that's one indication. They're all eating, 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 and there's this one guy, he's sitting on the perch, he doesn't come down, there's got to be something wrong. You notice that right at the very first, first time you see, that's one of the signs. The next thing I do is I, uh, I'll, I'll handle the bird, and I feel his body weight. And if I, you could feel right away, they start losing the, uh, the muscle texture. Uh, you can feel a sharp keel, right? Uh, and then I'll take and I'll open his mouth up and I'll see what it's like in there. I'll, I'll see the color of his tongue. If his tongue's black, I know he's got a little, little bit of respiratory yeah. issues. Right. Uh, I look and see if there's saliva, if, if it's yellow cheese in there, you know, I'll look at his back end and see if it's clean or is it stained yellow or whatever. Uh, what else do you kind of... You, you can make these judgments quickly. You could see when he's sitting on the corner and he doesn't come up if his wings drooping. 
right? Uh, and, and you uh, know, and that, uh, so so little things where you got to learn to become a doctor. You got to uh, you got you got to you got to what what I'm saying is you don't because ri- here you here it is. We got, I'm going to I'm going fi- to fix this problem for you, right? If you call Richard to help out for a problem, uh-huh. just like the vet does, 150 bucks for coming in. You know no, what, guys? Start looking at your birds. Open them up. No. Open them up. Hold on. No. We're not vets here. Let's but you got to take the really you got to right. take the but care to look. You got to rewind. You take the care to look before we just fire off like that. We mm. are always here to help and offer advice. Mm. However, yes. when the same we're not talking about comes, 150 bucks. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach, uh, trying to talk to people about seeing signs of birds that are sick, or or or, or injured. Or or but whatever. Can, it's, can it's, I can it's I ask not about 150? Uh, it's not what, no, 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 no. If you no, go no. to a vet, it'll be 150 bucks, and they don't well, even know what they're on. looking at. But you you know what you're looking at. When someone brings you a bird, we had a guy bring us a, a, a some type of a high flyer. He says there's something wrong with the bird. It's skin and bones, right? Skin and bones, right? Put the bird in my hand. Well, it's skin and bones. Open the mouth. The mouth packed with cankery cheese. Just packed. Stinks. Did you open the mouth, sir? No, I didn't open the mouth. Did you handle the bird? No. I asked, <laughs> what's the droppings like? Well, I didn't notice. Uh, is it eating? It's sitting there all hum- uh, humped up right. or whatever you call it. Well, I didn't notice if it's eating. Is it drinking too much? You notice it just keeps drinking. Yeah. Right? It's got, got a fe- fever. Got a fever. I didn't notice that. So I'm just saying, try and notice things. I mean, the guys have been flying for years. They notice that. I can walk into a section, a quarantine section, with 200 birds, and within a, a, a within 20 seconds, I have a look. I said, "Oh, that checker's sick." I come back. Right. I talked to Ryan. I said, "You know, in that quarantine over there, there's one bird that's not right." He looks at me and goes, "It's a checker, isn't it?" I said, "Yeah." But meanwhile, if you don't learn to notice these things, you just gotta yeah, look. You have to start, and, and you have to noticing. you have to want to try and get better too, right? You got to yeah. try and look and try, you know. Anyways, well, that's, so that's, it's, that's it's tricky. Just something I thought I brought up. That's a good point, though. You know. uh, what about birds when they're circling? If they circle too much, circle too much, mm-hmm. circle too much, circle too much. Not good. You, usually, they got maybe respiratory problems. They can't get mm-hmm. oxygen to the brain, and they get we get screwed they up. They get the screw up, right? And yeah, and we're not talking about taking them to the first time. We're talking about when their season going good. Yeah, when, starting when, to go. We're starting to go good. Uh, watch for the too much circling. You know, you got them going twenty five miles, and you you liberate, and they go zoom out of the basket, zoom straight for home, zoom straight for home, and then you go ten days later, and all of a sudden they're doing this. <laughs> around and around and around like they never been there before you could have some some resp- you could have some respiratory issues so you want to watch for that ah oh, another thing uh, leah you can hear us still pretty good correct yeah i'm just let me know when you guys are done so i can get to the comments i don't want to talk over you go ahead well i know brian man uh i think Ma- mansker had a question about box but before you we go to that leah if you had some comments or questions go ahead Trey Colson says, I put a pot of food in the nest so the babies learn how to eat before they are ever weaned. Same thing with training. First few tosses, I like to send the old birds to help them get home. But unlike most, he trains in all four directions from the house. He wants them always thinking. Uh, Trey also asks, do either of you know what causes a blue tongue? Go ahead. Uh, it- I oh, uh, it's, I, respiratory it, it's a respiratory problem. Some birds are born with it, but uh, I think it's a respiratory born. issue. I've seen birds that have it. It's like some pigeons have black feet, right? Uh, there's some. It's the tip. Some of the some. some of the birds have a black tongue. I don't think so. I've seen it. Anyways, seen a bird with it all season. Then I've seen birds that get it and it goes away. I think it's respiratory. I mean, I looked at these birds there. At that point there, when we had the respiratory problems, you've seen some of them with that black tongue, black tongue, and now the, the birds now you, you don't see it no That's more. That's right. So it's the respiratory problem. That's the way I look at it. Right. Uh, the other fellow was saying about training in a circle, every direction, and I I don't believe in that. 
I believe a pigeon is a, 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 a creature out of habit. Habit. And if, you, if you're racing to the north, draw a line to your first race point and train on that line. If you've got to walk in the middle of a field to liberate, that's the best, very good, you could do that. I mean, that's maybe a little bit of exaggeration, but keep it on that line. The pigeon is an animal or a creature of habit. We've seen today, Ryan, you changed the habit a little bit. What happened? A little bit. You yeah, changed sure, it. Yeah. What happened? Yeah, that's right. So if you, now, if you train, around the, tra train them around the block, that means east, west, north, south. Look at it this way. When, when you go to work for your job, you work at a place for 30 years. You get in your car, you can drive to work sleeping, and you drive home sleeping. But if, you, if your boss says, you work for me, but you got to go 40 miles east to a job and do it, you got to go 40 miles west the next day and do it, and the other way 40 miles, and the other way 40 miles. Every time you, your boss gives you a change, you got to grab the map book. Well, now you say, what are map books? We got GPS or whatever you call it. Yo, within two minutes, boom, 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 I find out where to go. No, no, no. Think about it. You got to grab a map book and say, oh, I got to go here. I got to get the map. So what I'm saying is every time you change the direction for your pigeons, you have to look in that map book every time. They're going to go, where is he taking us today? You get what I'm saying? You, 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 that, that's you, the you, way I look at it. You sort of slow him down. Now, take him on a line of flight. Now, now hold on. Now, we don't know. Maybe this guy no. flies around the can, court, yeah. around can, the clock. Can I just well, maybe, maybe he does. Okay, and yeah. if you do, then you're going to train him a little bit differently. But uh, I've taken the birds and trained. Well, their uh, the iPad just. Uh, crapped out so i guess you guys are going to hear from me for a minute uh mike vandriak says we start racing from the north and end up mostly west within the later longer releases so my question is for those of you because i know that there are um combines and clubs and provinces out there who fly i think three different directions i think where uh wayne flies it's three different directions I'm curious, maybe Trey is in that same kind of situation, or how do guys like that train when they're going three different ways? As you can see, the guys are talking. They have no idea that we can't hear them. So, fun. Now we can talk bad about them. Anyway, that's my question for you guys. How do you train when your course is three different directions? Let me know in the comments. They could be on there for like 20 minutes rambling and would have no idea that I, we can't hear them. Yep. Good times. Let me know in the comment section. Uh, maybe, maybe they're going to figure it out now. Nope, they're still talking. Yep. Still talking. Yep. Maybe now. Maybe now. No, he's now figured it out. We are at our technology limit here today, folks. <laughs> As we wait. I guess nobody flies three directions. Wants to work electronic. Could be the humidity. Okay. Balloons could be the pigeon gods. I don't know. Can you hear me now? We're here. Hey, we lost you. Yeah, that whole yeah. whatever five minute whatever you guys are talking huh. about. Not a word of it. So. I'm not sure what to say. Well, here. Maybe we'll just wrap this show up for the day tonight. I don't know. It's not working I properly. I, I should just keep. I should just keep looking at this thing. Yeah. I, well, it's the same stuff we use every week. And uh, today could be the heat, humidity. I don't know. Everything just wants to buffer. I don't. 
Scott is from Cape Sable Island, Nova Scotia. Loves the discussion. Hello, Scott. I wonder if you know Dave. I'm sure you do know Super Dave if you're in Nova Scotia. Go ahead, Ryan. No, I didn't. Uh... So we were talking about line of flight. Keep them on a line of flight. Draw a line from your first race point to your right to your loft and stay on that line. If you got to drive a highway that takes you two or three miles because it's a super highway, when you get to that, that roughly that point, make a right turn and go over to, to, to reach that line and do it. I think that's the best way to do it. Don't train your pigeons to look in a map book. That's what, when you go around the block, you're training them to look in map books all the time, look in a map book. They can never trust. They're, they are a creature of habit, like I said, and that's all I'm going to say. We, we already talked about this, and then we got cut off. Yeah. Right. Anybody got any other uh, ideas? Uh, you know, uh, so I have been around for years. Maybe, in, maybe instead of going on 10 minute tangents, we can just express our mind and then say, Leah, any other comments yeah. or questions? And that way we don't end up in this situation. My question is. What about the Already. guys that are flying several different directions? Like Wayne, doesn't he fly three different directions? How do you train for that then? Go ahead. Uh, I've never done it. Uh, you just, uh, I would do this. I would start them off. This is if I was flying there in Calgary. I would train them one direction, get them coming good. Then I go the opposite direction, get them coming good. Then I go to one side. The opposite direction, short again, get them out going there, going good. I'd sort of go, I'd sort of teach them in, in stages. I wouldn't go on a clock every day. I wouldn't. Or you wouldn't go like, for example. I wouldn't go south today, north tomorrow, no. the next day west, the next day yeah, east. I got to no. work southeast. I'm going to go southeast. I'm going to go next week, next day southwest. Yeah, no, I don't know. Just You got to figure it All out. Right. Use common sense. ABC go Loft. Ahead, says is hunger the motivation for the young birds to come home fast after a five mile toss and trap go ahead ryan yeah it, it is it, it, it is but uh when they're when they're this young young at training they're so jacked up and fired up first it if they first got to burn that sort of off it takes a few tosses to get them uh, before they really start to get it focused but yeah, you don't send them full of feed. You know, we held them with the water today. We held them for the feed. So we used feed today. We used water. We used heat. We used small groups. We used the middle of the day when I know nobody and their brother is going to bring the birds out. Or very few people will bring their birds out in that weather. <clears throat> so uh, my question is, when you guys let your birds out for your trainers, do you let them go out as a, a whole or do you split them? Like say if you have 50 birds, do you do 25 and then like we did wait 15 minutes and do another 25 or do you let them out as a whole? And uh, my question for you guys is if you were just flying regular, dad and Ryan, like a regular racing series, you know, just your own little, your own birds, maybe a hundred or whatever, would you let them out as a group or would you divide them the way we are? I, I, I divide them. I, I, think, I think it's a good idea to divide yeah, them. Dividing them up is good. Make some smaller groups. And, and uh, the only thing I can say is give yourself some time if you can. There's no point letting them out into groups if you're going to let them out five minutes or ten minutes apart, especially when they're new at it. We waited for some group, groups today, what, 30 minutes? You, you sort of got to let them get up and get going. You don't want to add another group every, every five minutes because they just mix. And, and people that say... They don't mix. They don't mix. Okay. Once they do, what happens is if you let liberate and you wait five minutes, you think they're gone. And then they come back and they hook up with you. Let the next group out and they hook up. They actually will wait for your next group to come out. They'll they keep, actually keep They'll wait. They keep waiting. Yeah, yeah that's right. And I they, agree. So, so you, what you've done is you're, you've made a habit. You, you, so wait, wait for more. I find that <clears throat> Frank Icorn. So if says, you get to it, you're gonna. He releases all together. Mike Vandriak says one crate at a time or a single toss, one minute between birds. 
Ooh, the great single toss debate. Who else out there single tosses? Yeah. Guys, what do you think about single tossing? It does nothing. I don't think does. single to uh, single does. tossing. I like to if I if I'm going to do anything, I'll do it in threes. I think because the pigeons like to uh, uh, what do you call it? Compete against each other, or uh, they like to tag with each other with threes with one. Um, I, I don't think one benefits. And if it's one minute apart, your birds, I guess, better be real sharp. Your birds the, better the, be real sharp. And if anybody can do it, can bring me, I'll go to anyone's loft. Tell me how many times you trained your pigeons, how uh -huh. many times you single toss your pigeons. We're going to go one minute apart. Uh -huh. I want to see them in the clock one minute apart. For every bird that you do, I give you $500. But every wow. time a group of birds come together, you owe me the same amount back. Because I don't, I'm, you don't see it. I mean, you got to be a real wizard, and put a lot of, lot of road time and and a lot of thinking to get them to do it that good. I don't. I'm sorry, Mike. I've never seen it that close. One minute. I like to get up there too when I take the birds up. I like to sit for, if you could sit for 15 minutes before you liberate, or a half an hour even, have a coffee. <laughs> it, it helps the birds settle in and and think about what's going to happen here. If you get up there and you just open the chute up and get get out of here because I got to get going, I don't think it benefits the birds. The birds like to have to sit, think a little bit. Go ahead. Uh, well, that has sparked. We are 48 minutes into the family show and we have sparked the single toss great debate of June the 28th. Comments are coming in here. Let's see. What do we uh -oh. got? Uh, Frank Icorn says uh, that he has, doesn't have the kind of time to single toss. Troy says, when I retire, I'll single toss. Scott says, single tossing is crap. The birds wait for each other. Tried it many times. Henry says, that's a good question. With the one bird series, wouldn't it be good, a good idea, to single bird toss, train your birds if you plan on entering the single bird series in the Pioneer. And then we've got more comments. So respond and then I'll get back to the comments. No, no, nope. No, I, I, well, for the single bird, we're not going to do no single tossing. We're going to have our birds in better condition. No, Henry asked about training. Training. I, I wouldn't train them. I, I want to keep the, the, they're still going to go up as a group. And if there's five birds in that group, I want to have the strongest pigeon, the, the healthiest pigeon, and by the time I get to that point, the birds will have been trained out. They'll have the smarts. And I hope that my bird pulls your four or five or ten birds my way. My, I want to have the leader. And I don't think you're going to get it on single toss. I, 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 I'm just saying, Henry, I don't think you got to waste your time. I mean, I, Mike, I think it's great. Put them, Toss them in groups of five. Toss them in groups of three. Mike says that he wants his birds to wait and hook up. After the third time, they realize they're wasting their time. And head straight home. I teach them not to wait by letting them experience how much time they they took up. I hope I read that right. Uh, Mike also says, three tosses, Ryan. That is what it takes. Done it many times. Old birds and young birds. Okay. Can you hear us? Yes, we. I can hear you. Yep. Three times. So he lets them out. And the, uh, sing, 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 single toss. And he, he waits for them to wait for another bird to hook up. Yeah. And and so, then so, so hold by on. the time you let hold the on. third one out, they're hold all on. hooked up. Hold on. Let, 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 let's be honest. You got 50 birds. It's going to take you then, what, 50 minutes to let them out? So you let the first bird out. This, I'm just using, I'm thinking here. I let first bird out. It goes off. And it's, it circles. It has no interest in leaving because it's never done this shit before. Then, I, wait a minute, one minute later, let up another one. So the first one goes, hey. Hey, perfect. This is great. So the first one's going to be flying for an hour. Uh, you do it. You do it. Like, three, you do it can, three times. Can from somebody who like literally has knows nothing about training and how to train and what to do. From a common sense point of view, what then Mike is kind of telling me is he lets them go single toss. And they wait for the rest of them, or I what what are we what are we saying here? I don't. Yeah. Wouldn't they wait then? Like, are they waiting? 
or are you getting them on they the would, drop? They're, like, they're going to wait. Bang, and then, uh, you know, two minutes later, another one comes, and then two minutes later, another one comes, or are they coming as a group? And I'm not asking that to be rude. I'm asking that as a legit question. When you single toss your birds, Mike, do they come one at a time, or do they come as a group? More so than not. What's the higher percentage? Because to Listen, me, if they're coming I've, as a group, I'm feeling like that's not really working because they're coming as a group anyway. But I don't know. What do I know? I, I find if you want to get down to Mike's single tossing method, if you want to do it the real, I think the swiftest way, you have, to, you have 50 birds. Just get them trained out. Just training good. All of a sudden, cut them into half group of 20 each or 25 each the next day cut them into an, half, cut, again. half again now you got four groups going and space them out space them out the next day cut them again down until you're down to small groups of threes and, and the night yeah that's right three uh, it's like out there running with somebody you run better when there's two or three guys running than by yourself or cycling it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Hey. hey you, you know. know you know. I, you know what. You know what. Here was the. Here was. Here was the. Here was the thing. When when I went to Europe, there they had this run. You had to run. You had to run around an Olympic, uh, Olympic track. You had to do it four times. You had to go around the track four times in eleven minutes. Okay. You that literally. Be... You literally had to run about ten mile an hour to do it. Right. Okay. I had to do it by myself. Nobody could run with me because you couldn't do it, right? right? I could never do it on my own. So you know what I had to do? I had to get on a treadmill and put the treadmill to the speed and stay with the treadmill because I was running then now with somebody. Right. Well, it, I, you know, and that, pigeons, that well, can I ask you a question? When you, when. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go. No, but that just leads to no, an even, no, you know, deeper question is do pigeons work better as solo or as a team are they more of a i mean aren't they they're birds don't they flock like are, isn't it more natural for them to uh be as part of a flock i don't know uh, mike says uh, that he did it today at 25 miles 38 youngsters one minute apart hot and strong headwinds frank eichhorn says you will have 50 hanging around for another 50. And then Mike says, yes, Leah, they stack up. After the third toss, they come one minute apart. Huh. Interesting. We'll have to tr we'll try it. Well, well, hey, you know what? Mike, you let me know when you're up this way. We'll do it from here. And we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the clock. That's it. Because I'm going to tell you, I, 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 I don't know. It sounds, it's, you know what? I've never done it. So, I, you know what? Mike's done it. Okay. I'm going to trust Mike on this one. I don't see it happening, but that's a me thing. I don't know if anyone else. I don't think uh, I'm going to do it. Luck. And you know what? Yeah, Again, right. when the, when you let out a thousand pigeons or five thousand pigeons at a release point, they're all together. What, what I like is your kit of birds. If you can get them coming out of that trailer and heading on a beeline straight for home, those birds, if they come out of there and they're in good shape and good mental frame. They come out of that trailer and they just automatically hook up together and they're like a team. They're just, you know what I mean? I don't know. They're all good. There's a lot of good points. I don't think if you don't have the time, don't think it's the be all end all. Get them down to smaller groups. Make your groups. If you got 50 birds, break them into five groups. There you go. You, you created more leaders that day. All righty. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else. I uh, think does leaders is tossing, right too. Leaders, yeah. Well, of course you want to create leaders. Le sure. Hi. Yeah. What? Leah, do you do you do you want to try it? We got 180 birds tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You start letting them out a minute apart, okay? Oh, and then the next day you do it, and then the next day you do it. We'll see at at what point they start coming a minute apart. And I'm going to tell you something. You're going to go 30 days, and guess what? They sit and wait. <laughs> they won't be coming no minute apart. And if they do, we'll have created something far greater than going to the moon. You're yeah, doing that tomorrow, Ricky. Yeah. Can we not do that? <laughs> hey. No. I mean, I'm out there nice in the bacon sun. Sounds. I got I got enough suntan. <laughs> Frank will go with you. 
Okay, no questions or Good. comments. Uh, Frank says you'd be gone for a week. It's more like, yeah, uh, Loft Manager Richard would be gone for a week and we'd be on the line for a week. That would be like the worst yeah. Pioneer yeah. Marathon ever. <laughs> anyway, what else do we want to talk about, guys? Okay. Oh, uh, people, uh, I had Brian, I don't know if Brian's on, but people talking about backs, checking backs on pigeons. And uh, when you're checking a back on a pigeon, you see these people, they're doing this this leg spreading thing. And I'm seeing guys now on the internet, they're literally getting, you could put a watermelon in between, like they got the legs like, wow, like wide open. Yeah. And, and, and they're doing this and this and this and the... when you hold the pigeon in your hand if the back's tight the back just stays nice and tight in your hands you don't have this is this a salesman what is this i don't know i i i've never done it i've been to top-notch flyers and all over and they've never done it but some people do it i don't know why i think it's, it's a it's an amateur it, it, it's, move it's like some guys will tell you vent bones if you put your finger between the vent bones, hey. it's a hen. If it's tight, <laughs> it's a cockbird. That's but all a pile you, you, of bunk. You ready for this one? I had a breeder that we do auctions for. Right. I said to him, I see you do it in the videos. You know what he said? No. I get so many dummies that will not buy a pigeon unless I show them that. Oh, I see. So okay. that's why I do it. He says, well, it, but, I but, can but, feel but, a bird in two I seconds. Just can I interject? Then why would you want to sell your pigeons? To a bunch of dummies who are going to take them home and do nothing with them because they're dumb. You know, we don't, you're not doing anybody a favor by, by perpetuating stupidity. You get, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you just, you got to take a but, stand. But, like, but you don't, we don't do it on our auction site. I'm not going to toot our own horn, but I'm going to toot our own horn. We don't do it. I don't but, care if, but, it, but doesn't you know sell, what? if it doesn't if, sell if that somebody, pigeon because I didn't spread its leg open. I don't really want you to have that pigeon. I'm sorry. That's probably wrong of me to say. Anyway, we got questions. Well, <laughs> that's that. Uh, you know what? If you got the if you got the money, maybe you got. I'm trying to see if this is going to work here. I, you there, Leah? I just yeah, I'm here. Over there for a minute. Okay. All right. Yeah. But anyways, uh, for for Brian, for Brian. When you see somebody really doing that and they're and they're doing it and they're constantly doing it, it's their go-to thing. Um, I look at it and laugh. Yeah, it's a, it, I call it a, a little junior novice move. I think oh my, they were, could you imagine they were showing going this going and, to going to Xavier versus you know going over to Europe to a, a breeder there and and doing that with one of his pigeons? Can we just give you guys a public service announcement? If you go to Europe and you go to a breeder in Europe and you go to their loft, please, God, if they let you handle one of their birds, please do not do that. Please don't give the rest of us here a bad name because you're going to be, you're, please, please don't. That's my tip of the day. Anyway. Yeah, I, you don't, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to. It's not necessary. You the bird dumb. doesn't like it. Don't do the it. Bird doesn't like it because uh, just an FY and an I there's no pigeons don't fly with their legs open Last that was the main tip yeah main tip pigeons don't fly with their legs open don't do it like Frank Icorn says you're going to get kicked in the nuts if you do do it over there Scott Reed says it's idiots who think if they do the hand test We'll think they're experts. Yeah, I know. It drives me crazy. Okay. Rita has a question. Question from a newbie. Ryan is waving his hand and telling me that I think his audio is crapped out again. Let the good times roll here today, folks. Do you guys prefer Tylenol or Advil? <laughs> He's reconnecting now. And then I'm going to ask Rita's question. Who has been patiently waiting? And we're waiting. If there's like a local cable company that would like to um, maybe come and help us film, 
will gladly do it for free. <sighs> One more second, Rita, gang, hold tight there. Uh, Tracy prefers Tylenol. Yeah, I like the Tylenol too. You know what? Here we can't get the um, nighttime ones. I guess it's banned here in Canada or something. So whenever Ryan goes to the States, I always get him to pick me up some Tylenol PM. Mike lost power. Yeah, I'm about losing power too. <sighs> Scott says, put your money on that bird, Rita. And we're waiting for Ryan to reconnect. I think Ryan's about ready to have a nervous breakdown today, as we all are. Oh, here we go. We're getting violent here now. Alrighty. Okay, we can't hear Ryan. Maybe we'll just wrap this one up. Or we'll wait another minute and see. <laughs> if you can read, if you can <laughs> read lips. <laughs> this is a uh, pretty, this is a good one. <laughs> Baby. There he is. Je Jesus. <laughs> there he is. I had to bring baby Jesus in. <laughs> now you know what I've done, eh? <laughs> I've turned up this pile of crap over here. And <laughs> oh, I just can't. <laughs> okay. We're good now. <laughs> If you guys want to smoke marijuana, you can. If you want to drink the hard stuff, drinker. And you want to know what? I need help mentally because of this. <laughs> this is my this is my tumor. All right. We were having a great conversation about single tossing, and then we got into Tylenol and Advil. Um, if you can hear me okay, I will get back to the comments. Please, God, can you hear me? I, I'm good. I'm here. Go ahead. Okay. Please, baby Jesus, continue. <laughs> All right. Rita had a question and she said, question from a newbie. It appears to me that the birds love to fly together as they must communicate with one another um, a bit, a bit. What if, but what if one is so good, they just decide to take off for home on their own? Well, then that's what you call a winner. <laughs> yeah. I Listen, the pigeons always start at the same flying speed. It's the pigeons that hold the condition the longest. They lead the group in the end. And that's why when you're flying and you get six birds come together and you bring three birds with you on a race or you get five birds that come together and you get three that aren't yours, your bird was leading the dummies, the ones that were just hanging on, just hanging on. That's it. There's leaders and there's followers. You need, if you want to have leaders, you need good quality pigeons, good condition pigeons, well-trained pigeons. And I don't think single tossing, uh, it's not that the, you don't have to do it. And don't dwell yourself on doing it because you're going to go nuts. But Mike Vandriak says, I recommend that someone try the one minute single toss, pick 10 birds, set your clock. Release them at 25 miles, one minute apart. After the fourth time, tell us what you see. They will be clocking one minute apart in the same order they were released. If uh, Love Manager Richard, I might have to wants, try this. If, if Love Manager <laughs> Richard wants to attempt it with my flying bitches this year, I am more than willing to sign up for the science project because we're here to try things out. So sign me up. Oh. Who's that? Look, we Who got a it? dummy back. Woohoo! Oh my! Oh, wait a minute. 
I was sitting on the roof all day. What was I doing? I had some water. There. Okay, thanks for flying. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye. Let's Hold see on, who that was. In. Oh, no, he's in. He's in. You know what? He's in. Who is it? Everybody, guess. Who is it? Try that technique out. I don't know. Live, right on the family it's show. It's off the yellow piss stains, as Crozier would say. Henry Live. Winter see? from the Yellow Jackets. Ricky's trying to steal more of our birds. Dream shot. You are home. For some reason on the uh, clock here, it says 180. It You're says home. no He's information. I don't know. Can you hear me? Or I don't know. Are you just rambling to yourself now at this point? Are you delirious? Yep. I can, I can hear. I can hear you good. All right. Can you hear me? Uh, Mike I really, says, I have done it many I really times. So I, he's machine. speaking from actual I'm, experience. Those that are doubting it have not tried it. Sign me up. I'm ready. Flying bitches. Tell Ricky. Let's go. I'm willing. Okay. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna do five. Well, we'll do ten birds. We're gonna do ten birds. We're gonna pick the ten birds and we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it as a, as a fun test. Twenty five miles from the wait rock. Wait a minute. With the pioneer birds or with uh, Ricky's birds? No, I'm not doing with the pine. No, no, no. I'm not doing it with the pioneer birds because yeah, you're giving them special treatment. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. All the special treatments getting in the way. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Yes, I'm here. Anyway, I'm willing to Did it crap out. I'm no, I'm here. I'm here. Are you there? Please help me. Baby Jesus. I can hear you. Go. Okay. Keep going. We got another one back. Oh, we got another one back. Exciting. Let me get to the YouTube here. What are Carlos. we saying here? Okay, ABC Loft says, is there a way to beat flyers that have less miles in a race? Lofts are going to be 10 to 20 miles before me on the race map. Sure. Have the best condition birds, and you're going to do the best on tailwinds. You'll be better on the long, you're on the long end, so you're going to do better when the wind is behind the bird pushing. That doesn't mean you still can't do good in headwinds. Uh, you can, you know, that's the way I look at it. I don't think uh, you're, you're not, you're not going to get 20 miles. It's not that bad. You, you should be okay. 20 miles is about 20, 25 minutes on the wing. Your bird should still be able to hold its speed. Again, you want good condition pigeons. Oh, we got two more back, Leah. We got two more back. Oh, we got two more back. Where are Another they? Another two. Over at the Swister? Yeah. Well, they're on. Uh, they're on uh, Big Betty there. Big Betty. Um, I just uh, I had a question about this. So, if we're going to do this with ten of um, mm -hmm. our birds, loft managed Richard birds, can we still do that with mm -hmm. our training? Like, you know how we're letting out one team at a time. Could we then like do the single toss in the intervals, or like how's that going to work? Or you have to like literally sit there well, and just may, at the end may, do one at a time. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Maybe what we'll do, Leah, just for shits and giggles, because we're pretty busy, and I know you people think all we do is play with pigeons all day. And actually, yeah, we play with pigeons all day, every day, 365 days a year. We play with it. This is our business. This is our job. This is what you pay us to do. We'll do the single tossing from your house, Leah, with the 10 birds. We'll do it. We'll start them on Monday. That's, that's what, 16 miles, 17 um, miles, 18 miles, about 18 miles. Okay. Yeah, 18 miles, and uh, we'll start on Monday, and on Friday, on Friday, they have to be one minute apart again, and let's see if they clock a minute apart, and we will be using the Benzing Innovation Through Tradition since a long time ago. Uh, sorry, I left. I had to get my young birds in. Uh, I wanted to stay with them a little longer. But I knew that you, okay, you so wanted we don't need back to, on the show. We did. Okay, but, so uh, we're going to do that. That would we're be against the rule because we're going to take them off the line. Uh, I want to see this a you, minute Mike, apart. Mike says, oh, okay. for, for the, the single toss mayor here, Mike, <laughs> I'm just playing with you, Mike, um, <laughs> says do them in between the groups. It's a perfect way to fill the time. 
Well, that and trivia. And Mike, I'm expecting you to get some trivia questions ready for me for tomorrow's <sighs> next training toss. God help us. <laughs> zero, zero, two. Now, Leah, there's a rule for tomorrow. Oh. Leah, there's there's a rule for tomorrow. There's going to be no alcoholic intake and no cigarette smoking. <laughs> okay. Oh. You want to know why? Know about, well, no. We're going to feel the heat. Oh. Yeah, well. Tomorrow's another hot one. Who knows? Oh, if, if we were worrying about the rain, that sure went by us. Uh, Mike says that uh, my house would be perfect, the perfect location for, what are we going to call it? The single toss-off? What should we call it? Maybe put some money on it or what? Make it an event? We could have a barbecue? Wow. <laughs> and literally, we're we're gonna have we're gonna have it on we're gonna have it on Facebook, Leah. And I want to see one minute with a stopwatch, a minute, and I, we're gonna sit here a minute with the clock thing running. I want to see, but it's not. If I'm gonna butt in, you can butt it's in. It's not the perfect spot because Leah is about two miles okay for, for, west for, of the line for, of flight. For, so, the, so who are you gonna? Uh, these could on. be winning pigeons. You're gonna uh, you're gonna uh, make uh, them train to go listen, that way. Listen. Listen, I want to try this out. So you know what? Then you can sit up there on the line and do it. There you go. Well, See, you know I'm, what? I'm just saying. Listen. I'm gonna, I'm okay, gonna, listen. It's going to be 20 we're, minutes listen, longer. We're going to compromise here. We will do it, like Mike said, at the regular release location, like where everybody's going, but we'll do them in between the groups. Okay? That way we don't have to hear LMR whine and then everybody's happy. Problem solved. I'm not whining. I'm just saying you're Stand taking it. them off the line of okay. flight. I, I worded that. You're training wrong. them to go okay. two, two okay. miles okay. west. All right. I right. can't handle one more sensitive Very person sensitive. today. Very sensitive. Ricky sensitive. Sensitive. Anyway. Yeah. Or guess what? I'm going to quit. Okay. You can do it. Okay. We'll do it between <laughs> liberations. But watch that single bird. He's going to hook up with those other birds. Okay. Uh, we'll see. We'll, We're going to we'll have fun. We're going to have some fun. You know what? The least, you know what? What's it going to hurt us to try? No, we're all Not here good. to learn. Okay. That's fine. Moving it's not on. Gonna hurt anything. On. Moving on. Uh, there's no other uh, comments or questions. Rita says, I'm only guessing, but it must take more than one toss to learn this system. Uh, training? Oh, yes. That's why we're four. doing it for what? Four. What do you mean? Four tosses from each spot. Oh well, yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna be between th between three and four tosses from each spot, yeah. and again, it's sort of like what Mike said. It takes about three or four times, maybe five times at the yeah for them to single toss. And that's what Mike's saying. Mike says he's tried it and he's done it. We're gonna try it, Mike. We are gonna try it and we're gonna be honest. So let's see. Hey, you know what? We're all about learning, right? And we're not knocking you, Mike. We're gonna give her a swirl. That's right. Okay. And we're all going to learn. Swirl. And yes, Mike says after four tosses. So after four tosses, these 10 birds that we've nominated should be clocking one minute apart. Game on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good job. Anything else? So how long after the, when we let the group out, does that bird go out? Scott, don't worry about that. We'll figure that out. When we get to that point, can you maybe yeah. get your birds there first and then we're going to worry about that? You know, how about I'm this, like Mike? How about you send us a PM and let us know okay. the Mike single right. toss method and how you want us to do it and incorporate it into our training, our regular Pioneer training, and we will take your lead and we will all see the results. I think that's good because we don't know. This is Mike's uh, training idea, right? Okay. So, so. Sounds I just right. don't want to do it wrong, yeah. and then he's going to say, well, it didn't work because we did it wrong. So I think we should take, you know, let him take the lead and let us know how to do it. Right. And we will do it. Right. Okay. We'll try it. Uh, Tracy says, That's and it's that. sort See, of like got that down. Now what Mike said, it takes about three or so on the individual release. Do you have to record that the number of one as it's released so you know how accurate that turns out oh hmm. oh of course oh yeah yeah we're gonna write down all the numbers and they're gonna go in the same and actually we're gonna put them in a widowhood grate so they're in the same order every day oh 
great. That sounds good. Okay. We're going to do let it. The, let the good times we got a 12 roll. bird crate. We're going to do 12 <laughs> pigeons. The, and not like else we have anything else to do, but we're going to add okay. this to the, ma the, the madness. Oh, this is always excitement in the village. All right. Okay. You want to talk uh, junior activation and sprint series briefly, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, well, it's time. Uh, what do we got? July the 5th, you've got to act uh, owners. You've got till July 5th to activate your birds in the sprint. After July 5th, the it's an open form. So that means anybody can claim uh, one of your birds for the sprint series. It's $125 a pigeon. $100 goes to the prize. $25 goes to us for the admin. It's four races, a 25, a 50, and two 80s. We will pick when we're going to be doing them. When the birds are ready to do those spots, that's how we're going to do them. Uh, we pay out first, second, and third in clocking order. 50, 30, 20, the split. If pretty much all the birds sell, you're looking anywhere from pot 17, you know, 16 to 18,000 in the pot for four races. And uh, this, basically four, basically $4,000 a race. These are four races before the first race. Before the first young yeah. bird race, yes. Right. And these are real, real sprints, real short. Some would say it's a trapping contest. But you'll see. It's going to be good. We'll see how many birds can, uh, how good it was. It was great last year. People had a lot of fun with it. And I think this year is the same thing. You never know. So it's across the, across the line. Across First the line. Bird, yeah. across the, across, well, yeah, uh, clocking. 25 yeah. miles, we got 150 birds together. How do you want to pay that out? No, I'm just saying one, well, two, three. I got to explain yeah. that to you. If you well, we don't, we don't do. You got her down? Only asking the question, right? We don't do equal first here. It's clocking order. So. No. Equal first are for races right. like this. Pyramids. That's a pyramid scandal. Sorry. Not, some, not something so we gonna, do here. You're going to have your pad. Uh, you like some questions, don't you? I'm going to have so my pad what? You're going to have your pad open with uh, how many stalls? Six stalls? I'm going to cut it down to one. Okay, that's that's a question I'm just asking. I'm going to have the, the th same thing you see every day here. Okay. Yeah. Well, what am I going to do? Change it for what? Okay, that's good. All right. I don't know. Why would I change it for that? Wait, so, is, this your, is this your first, so, so is this your first yeah, time? Yeah, first, first time. time yeah. I could tell you're a newbie. He's a newbie. Why, you know why would we change Some people the, ask these questions I'll quit. and I'm asking. Why would I'll we quit. change that? What's the problem with that trap? Well, it's only it. a question that I'm asking. I'm sure there's some people out there that are shy to ask the question. I know you're going to keep all the stalls open, but there's some people yeah. that like to ask that question. And, and, and again, you know what? I, I can't knock them because there's people that, that could ask that question. The stalls always stay the same. They're always, those are one, two, three, four, five, six are always open. That's what's open. So six birds can clock at once, but this clock of benzing, there's no tie. So it doesn't matter. And that's that. For that, uh, um, clocking order. Uh, I'm just going to get to the races. comments. The, the races what? will be done before the first race. Going to okay. get to the comments one second. Um, getting ahead. back to the single toss. Uh, Mike says release them in numerical order by band number. Maybe by color as well, and eye color we could do too. Uh, Frank says, didn't Bill Sheridan and Dave Rogers have a bet on that method, Mike? Tracy says, extra work for Leah. Yep, yay. <laughs> uh, Mike says, Frank, it is actually Randall Berkey's system. Randall Berkey. I know Randall. Randall can fly a pigeon. This is Randall's system. We're gonna okay, well, we're going to give her a shot. We're going to try uh, it and give her a whirl. We're going to try it. Maybe we're, you know, who knows? Maybe it'll be the next new method. And I'm going to tell you, if it does, you know what? If it doesn't work, we're going to do it until it works. We'll try it all season with those same birds. Oh, God. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, I wonder, what, I wonder what we're missing, though. I wonder what Randall hasn't told us. The secret little tip, you know what I mean? You know, there's that, whoops, I didn't tell you that part of it, yeah. you know, <laughs> where I starve them for five days straight and get them jammed up real good. And, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not knocking it. We're going to give her a swirl, and that's it. Uh, Frank, Frank's not betting for it. And these two that are out on the roof here, 
they're going to get down with the Woodland Fairies tonight, it looks like it. But that's okay. They hmm. came together, didn't they? No, they were up with your birds. Oh, were they? Yeah. So we talked about the... Oh, okay, sprints? what else do we want to talk about? Juniors. Juni? Yeah. Go ahead. Yep. So now, if you want to activate your... Ju uh, juniors are open. So if you watch the show and you don't have any pigeons in the race, maybe you don't even have pigeons, you can activate a junior bird into the regular program. It's 350 per junior, by one, by two, by three. Make up a race team, some real nice birds there. Uh, we've got about, I don't know, 29 or 28 to pick from. They're on the website. Fantastic. If you are one of the owners of the juniors, you can still upgrade your bird. You just pay the balance, which is 225 and then you're out of the junior program and you're into the main race. Um, remember, if you do buy a junior pigeon and you, you don't own it, the rights still are for the, the, uh, the owner. The owner still owns the bird. You're just flying for that portion of the money. And uh, if someone claims your pigeon, don't worry. You're still in the junior class, so you're going to win junior money. There you go. So could I, can I ask you a question again? And, the, you know. Could I mm -hmm. keep it as a junior mm -hmm. and also upgrade it as a senior? Uh, ah, there's one for there's you. One for you. Yeah. Sure, so, pay, pay, yes. then, then pay, pay, pay the 225 No, no, yeah. I have to pay 350 No, you got to so pay the 350 they'd have yeah. to pay 350 You got to pay the full 350 well, I have it down for Sure. Yeah. That's I right. Mean, I, you now, know. I don't hear you saying that is a wonderful question. Richard. Well, that's a wonderful question. Oh, that's what I'm saying. If he wants to have it, junior, junior in his son's name, or daughter, and senior in his own name. Yeah, you can pay it for three fifty. And the birds, yeah, he has yeah, to pay it for three fifty. Yeah. And do well. Yeah. yeah. Are you thinking about buying one? Would you like to buy one, maybe, Rickard? Go ahead, Leah. Uh, nothing else. I think that's it. So, on the agenda but tomorrow, I, what's no. on the agenda? Okay. We'll try not to lose too many. We're going to go back at it. Birds are going to go out tomorrow morning. I'm not even going to really bother. I'm going to let them out. I'm going to let them do their thing. I'm going to bring them in at around 11 tomorrow. We're going to have them basketed up, and we will, we're will. we going to try and start to release for about 12, 12.30, I'm going to hope. Uh, again, right now, we got a whack of birds here. i got to catch them all and then divide them up into their proper crate so it takes a bit of time. So if I don't answer my phone, if you call me and I don't answer my phone, I'm not watching Oprah Winfrey or sleeping. I'm playing with pigeons. Just like to let that out there. Because today I was in the law from 6 o'clock. Till what time do we finish the show, Leah? Uh, which show? The last Five? show? 4.30? I, didn't. I don't even know. I don't know. The ever, yeah, the never-ending never ending story. So guys, we're, we're, we're sitting here with it day in, day out. But that's the agenda for tomorrow. They'll go for their toss again, back to the same spot. We're going to switch up the groups tomorrow. We're going to start the green first. We're going to go green, blue, yellow, and red tomorrow. Okay, and so, then what's going to uh, happen? If someone could tell me, if someone could figure out. You had to. Crap yeah. it out. Can Hold you on. hear me? One second. No, I hear you. Oh, here we go. Oh, Lord, help me. Just when we're about ready to wrap it up. He's going to keep trying, so I'm just going to wait. Seem to have one there on the landing board, struggling a little bit. I'm not sure if that's one of ours or one of LMR's or whose that is. Henry says, I had to decide whether to pay to move my birds or buy a benzene clock. I'm going for the benzene. Yay. Good job, Henry. I think this he's back now. Clicker. All right. Are you back? We're here. Okay, good. Who is that there on the board? There right? we are. Yeah. I call him slow and steady. He's part of the red team. Part of the red team. Uh, I don't know. 
or the red team. Look so, at that. so you're down only five today. I don't even know. Now. These are two. I think you said seven. Yeah. So I would make it one eighty two now. I don't know. Maybe we're down three. Yeah, one eighty two. So we're down three. Yeah. So tomorrow, you know what? Tomorrow morning, all of a sudden, we roll in. Yeah. Or they don't roll in. Either or, so either way. But uh, getting back to what we were saying, uh, what were we saying? We were talking about the uh, Sprint Junior. Uh, what were we saying, Leah? Tomorrow, what was happening Sprint tomorrow? Sprint Junior, yeah. What was happening tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, loft fly in the morning. We're not going to overly push them again. We're backing the feed off still here again. Today they had uh, they had some sneaky mix and straight reindeer corn, but a quarter, quarter fed. Most of them got to go about a quarter feeding. Lots of water. Uh, so the boxes tomorrow will be a little wetter. Uh, they're going to uh, go for their toss, as we said. We'll see how they do. If anyone can give me the what team was the quickest, I think the quickest was uh, I think the quickest was the green, or maybe the blue. Maybe it was the blue. I don't know. Was that the first ones? No, blue was no. the third. And that's it. We're going to see if we can get Ricky's <clears throat> camera going again tomorrow. It's it's difficult. I we can't I can't figure out why uh, why today these cameras are just stopping. Yeah, it's like it works great two days, and then on the third day it's crap. Um, David has a question. He said, "The latecomers we are seeing come in. Will you basket them back up to train tomorrow, or give them a day off?" Oh, well, that's a good question. You know what? They sat on that roof. They drank water. They'll go tomorrow. I looked at them here, right here on the board. They'll go. They look like they never even went. Oh, well, because it didn't work. So they must have stopped at the. Or, or you know what? They came. They got in with your birds, and they didn't come in because the, it's dark in there. There's no light in there to go in. The birds are in the darkening, right? So right. tomorrow, this bird's here. He's here. You know what? Pick it up a bit. Everyone else made it. You're home on the day. You can go. You can go tomorrow. You're going to go again. Again, now, we keep turning the screws. Question for you. Is that on a kind of day-by-day -day basis? You will observe them and see when they come back, how how late they've come back, what condition they are when they come back, that will determine what you do the next day? Or is it just every time too bad you're going? No, we look. I mean, I, I watched the birds there today. Birds came back. Prime example, uh, Frank. What's the bird's name? Uh, Gas Man. Right? Nice blue checker pied hench. He came. Next thing I seen her on the grass here with the one with the bad wing from Glenn Thornley. Yeah, I seen that. Yeah. Glenn Thornley was just chasing it around. They were strutting yeah. for each other. I look, I say, oh, we haven't started to work yet. So we're but gonna that, go. That was a bird that came in time. In time, yes. So th these two here, like you say, I let my birds out late, <coughs> three thirty. So they weren't here at three thirty. Oh. Maybe right. they maybe they were on the back of the roof. I, we they yeah, all didn't go in. We don't know. Well, so, we're looking here. We're I'm looking on the board right Hold now. On. They're not pooched at all. They're not pooched at all. We're looking at how they look. And you know what? I, I, what, what, are we, what are we gonna do? Kid glove everything. You hold no. them back tomorrow. The next day, they're they're you know, they can they can do it. There's no problem. Well, you go back in there tomorrow and you look at them in their box perches and you see how they're looking. If they look tired. Well, they, they, I, I they, don't send them. <laughs> they're going to look a little tired tomorrow because, number one, we're backing the feet off more now, right? And they're going to go out and burn some energy, and they're going to they're gonna start to think here about what we're doing, right? They're going to go tomorrow. Let's see how tomorrow's toss goes. Maybe we lose them all. I don't know. I have to play the instrument of how I'm thinking I'm going to play it. I'm not playing it your way. I'm going to play it my way. Um, then there's nothing wrong. We, we got the same idea. Rita says, where is the next toss from? So how long are we going to do this five kilometer for, Ryan? Around? And where do we go next? Well, we're, we're hoping that we're going to pay out. We're going to move on by Wednesday or Thursday. We do it until they beat us home. Until we can see that they're, you know, hey, you let them out and they're, 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 maybe they're not five, they're not three minutes, but yeah. they're six minutes a group. Yeah, that's right. I, Boom. I, you I, know? I'm going to say... Again, those hens, the yearling hens, made it in four minutes. Most of these youngsters made it in 
I don't know, 18 to 25 minutes. Okay. So when they can do, when they make that in four to five to six minutes, let's say from five kilometers, I like to say when I release, when I show up back here in this yard where I'm coming down that road at 60 kilometers, that's what the speed is. They're arriving, they're even arrived or they're just arriving. So when they beat you home or arrive at the same time you do, then we move and, on. And remember, if you're training and it's a headwind and you're doing 60 to 80 kilometers, the birds don't go that fast. So you got to kind of use your, your judgment, but we know. We know. Let's see tomorrow. Let's see tomorrow. And and maybe whoever was watching today, see what the times were. Tomorrow we're going to try and be more on a, uh, you know, on even minutes or something like, you know, 2 o'clock, 2.20. We're going to go like that tomorrow. Uh, right. But today was the first toss, and they were a little bit mixy, mixy. And I said, you know what, let's just hold off a bit. But tomorrow we're going to go 20. We're going to go tomorrow. We go 20 minutes in between each group. Good? Good. So you're going to start letting them out either at, at the hour or the half hour. So for our mathematical skills, because we're not very mathematical well, I, sound. The, I'm good at math, but it's not my I forte. We're, we're not in a rush anyways, right? No, we're not. I, I would say when you get your birds first, first come in, mm -hmm. the next ones go out. Right, but then I may have to wait for 10 minutes till the hour gets right, and then everybody gets oh, all okay, juiced yeah, yeah, yeah. up. 20 right. minutes. Let's do it 20 minutes tomorrow. They won't. They won't be long. They won't be that bad. They'll be better tomorrow. I think they're going to be better, better or worse. They might be worse. It's fifty-fifty here. Okay. So if there's no other comments or questions, Good. we're going to wrap it up. Brian, I guess we'll see you tomorrow morning. Are you going to show the law fly, or I guess you will, or what are you doing there? Yeah, I'll. Uh, I guess I'll put the law fly up. See how they do. Again, I'm not expecting any big miracles tomorrow, but we'll let them up. We'll let them go for their fly. I'm going to, uh, yeah, you guys can watch that, and then uh, we'll get them in basket, and away we go. Okay. That's Great good. show, guys. Thank good. you to everybody on YouTube and Facebook for uh, watching and for your participation. I'm going to wrap this up, Ryan, from my end. Go ahead. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We uh, hope we'll get this uh, computer stuff or this stuff situated for tomorrow or the next week's show. Uh, remember, don't quit. Pursue. Don't threaten to quit. Have fun. Enjoy those pigeons. And remember, the heat is good inch by inch, brick by brick, mile by mile. Thanks for flying with us, guys. We're going to.